Hello friends and welcome to the Honeycast today. Today is a very popular topic that I talk a lot about and I hear a lot from you ladies who write in or who join my Facebook group or who come into my program. The main thing that you're dealing with is an increase in belly fat. Yes, weight gain in midlife, but especially belly fat. And so today I really want to focus on a few things that you can do to reduce belly fat. And I want to start by saying last week we talked about why the belly fat gain. There is a specific or a couple of specific reasons why we start gaining weight in midlife. And it's not just about menopause. Menopause is part of the puzzle, but there are some other lifestyle factors that are happening that the good news is we have control over. So today I want to talk about how to eat for midlife and beyond, not just in your 50s and 60s, but beyond that. And I want to talk about the first step and maybe a few more to tackling belly fat. So if you haven't listened to my previous podcast, I want you to go listen to that because I want you to understand why we are increasing in belly fat. It's very important to understand the why. Next, I want to jump to the first step in regards to your mindset about the subject of belly fat. Here's what I want you to realize. Whatever you are putting into your body, whatever you're putting into your mouth, how you're treating your body, how you're moving your body are key factors when it comes to belly fat. So let's just talk about the first step. The first step that we want to do is we want to reduce inflammation. Because of declining estrogen levels, our inflammation usually is rising. That also contributes to a rise in cortisol which can lead to whacked out insulin levels and fat storage. And so we really want to focus on reducing inflammation, and we can do that with our diet. It is a number one way that we can reduce inflammation. So we want to focus on anti-inflammatory foods, such as green vegetables, leafy green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, Omega-3, some of omega-3s are walnuts, avocado, fish, mackerel, chia seeds, hemp seeds, good protein such as lean, chicken, turkey, reducing our red meat, not saying to keep it out of the diet, but just keeping it low and focusing on our lean protein. So we really want to focus on anti-inflammatory eating. The second thing is... We want to focus on slow burning carbohydrates. The worst thing you can do in midlife and beyond is to drop the carbs. Our body does not have the hormones that it used to have that would nourish our body, that would help our body with energy. What the carbohydrates can do is they can help our body with energy. They can energize us. They can also, and they do, support our thyroid and our hormones and our blood sugar. So keeping our blood sugar stable is key. And when we consume those slow burning carbs, and I'm talking about carbs like oatmeal and whole grains and sweet potatoes, even regular potatoes, lentils, black beans, quinoa, those type of real slow burning carbs, especially anchored with the protein with a little bit of fat, you are going to keep that blood sugar stable and you are going to give the body the energy, the glucose that it needs. Third, fiber is very important for reducing belly fat. You want to shoot for 20 to 30 grams of fiber a day. Fiber is your prebiotic. It feeds your gut microbiome, and we want a robust gut microbiome with good, lots of good bacteria. It will also help lower your insulin levels because it slows down your digestion time. 
it will help you feel full. And so some of the foods that you can focus on to get your fiber would be berries and beans, whole grains, fruits and vegetables with skin on, baobab, psyllium husk, green banana flour or powder if you have that. All of those are great ways to get your fiber intake in. Lastly, we're gonna talk about exercise. First, everyday movement is key. If you are not moving every single day, you will want to move. It is one of the reasons why we have an increase in belly fat is because we are sedentary. We are not moving as much. A lot of times we'll have lower energy levels and we're just not getting the movement that we need. So everyday movement, Five to 10,000 steps a day is what we're gonna shoot for. Once you get everyday movement in, then you want to go to legitimate routine exercise. And it does not need to look like it used to. If you were an exercise queen and you exercised every single day at a high intensity level, that will actually backfire on you. What you want to focus on is called zone two training. And this is low impact for 30 to 45 minutes maybe three times a week where you're working at about 60 to 70 percent of your max heart rate. So you're not in a very intense state. You're not really even breathless here. You're just getting the movement in for 30 to 45 minutes. It's called zone two training. The second needle mover exercise, and actually I'll back up and say this is probably the first needle mover exercise, is going to be strength training. When you build muscle, you are building your metabolism. You are turning on fat burning. So once you get the everyday movement in, I want you to move to more strength training. A good place to start with strength training is you start with just body weight movements. Something like the Trim Healthy Work-Ins would be good or just body weight exercises so that you are building a foundation of strength. Length. Then, after you've done that for four to six or eight weeks, you move into picking up weights and you start with lighter weights first. The main thing for women in midlife as far as strength training is that we don't want to overdo it and we don't want to get hurt. So the key to that is making sure you have enough recovery in between your sets. I like to say maybe in a minute to two minutes of recovery between sets. I would start out with two sets of 12 with a weight that you can use and the last three repetitions should be pretty hard. We're not talking about going to failure here in this particular time frame of when you start working out. Going to failure is important because we want to break down that muscle, but that's later. Right now, maybe you start with one set of 12 and you only need to do strength training two to three times a week and full body is the best way to do your workouts in midlife and beyond. If you are younger, those split routines work wonderful, but science shows that a full body workout for a woman in midlife and beyond um, at least hitting four to five major muscle groups with weights, overloading your muscle is the best way to build muscle. And then giving your body time to recover is very important. So giving your body two days in between your weight workouts will give you adequate time. Recovery is so much more important in our midlife than it's ever been. That's actually when you become stronger is in the recovery time. So think about that when you're doing your exercise. You don't have to rush through the exercise to get it done. You actually want to give your muscles time to recover, one to two minutes between exercises. And then give yourself a couple days between your weight training workouts. The last thing I'll say for fat burning is would be using the HIT, the high intensity training. I don't suggest starting with this. I suggest starting with your work-ins or your foundational strength, moving to strength training, and then maybe adding in one or two HIT trainings per week. This is short. The reason why this works is because it's called polarized training. So we're getting breathless. Getting breathless will turn on that fat burning but you don't wanna get breathless for too long because you end up working against yourself, against cortisol. So an eight to 12 minute hit, it can be low impact. It does not have to be where you're jumping. Although jumping and pounding and plyometrics and sprint training, there is a place for that in midlife. It will help with bone density. But as far as hit training, I suggest having a 
30 second on and one minute recovery for eight to 12 minutes, maybe twice a week at the most, but I would definitely start with one. So the first step, we're gonna recap. The first step, really get control of what is going into your mouth. If you are still on sugar, processed sugar and white flour and lots of caffeine, I wanna tell you that's not helping with inflammation. We really want to avoid that. You want to replace the white sugar and the white flour with healthy substitutes. As far as caffeine goes, I get a lot of pushback about this. Science just shows that sometimes in midlife, we become a little bit more caffeine sensitive and that can impact insulin levels. When our insulin levels are impacted, fat storage happens. So that's really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get our fat burning going on. And sometimes these factors work against that. So should you give up your coffee? Maybe if you have adrenal fatigue, yes. But one to two cups of coffee or caffeine a day is usually something that is moderate and can be done or used by women in midlife. But if you know that you're sensitive, if you feel jittery, if you just don't feel right after your caffeine, I would take it out. Take it out for a while. Maybe replace that with an herbal tea or something like that. And let's definitely get off of those bad fats. That's another thing that causes inflammation. We want to stay away from the canola oil, the vegetable oil, corn oil and oils like that. And we want to focus on those good, healthy fats and omega fats, good fats like olive oil. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it's also fat burning. Olive oil is coconut oil, MCT oil, even butter, palm oil. We want to stay away from the fats that are going to be inflammatory, such as conventional dairy. I'm not saying completely go off dairy unless it just doesn't go well with your body, but it does contribute to inflammation. The fermented dairy, such as Greek yogurt or kefir, those tend to be less inflammatory. So let's just focus on anti-inflammatory foods. Don't forget those e-meals, the slow burning carbs. I like at least two e-meals if you're a trim healthy mama a day. Fiber, you guys, Vegetables and fruits are your best friends. Let's let food be our medicine. Good news is the menopause belly fat is not inevitable. You don't have to go there and you can lose the belly fat. 